and welcome along to another episode of this FM21 Builder Nation story from Bangor City with me, Daniel. It's part 162 today and we are finishing the week in style. It's a very rare one as well. It's a triple header. We've got our first ever European semi-final. We're playing Rafe Rovers, arguably more remarkable than us being here in the Europa League semis. Greg Pringle up against us. Who's going to come out on top? We'll find out. In between the two legs, though, we're going to have to play our reserve side in the Welsh Cup final. And against a Barry Town side that did sneak third in the end, maybe they've got a chance of nicking a trophy. We'll wait and see. If you're looking forward to all of that, it should be a bumper episode. Please do chuck a thumbs up on the video. Subscribe down below for daily FM21 content. But we're going to have a very quick look at the results off camera. And then we're straight into a triple header of matches. So you were with me for the Europa League games. We bounced back after the tour draw with Lazio with a 5-2 win against TNS. It wasn't as easy as it looked. We were two down with 10 minutes gone in the second half. Broadbent got a brace though. Jennings won and Jones too. Jones and Jennings off the bench essentially won us the game. Absolute legends. Then a 2-0 win at Cardiff Met Uni on the final day of the season. Barry Town snuck a victory against TNS to wrap up third. Waters and Bulkley with the goals in that one, which set us into this game in pretty good standing. We've got nobody out for the first leg today. We've got nobody out for the cup final. Now let's try and keep everyone fit and let's try and get the victory. Straight into the first leg against Rafe Rovers. We will be playing the winner of Arsenal and Inter in the final. Probably where it goes wrong in truth. But we've got a chance to get to the final. Rafe Rovers, a very good side. Greg Pringle is still their star player. And of course, they were the champions of Scotland last year. They've got a lot of talent in that squad. But let's go and get through and sort out our lineup for the biggest game of our career so far. Yellow card suspensions wiped out at the semi-final stage. So it's only if someone gets a yellow today, we've got to worry about them in the second leg. It's Simancas between the sticks. Bektas and McDonald, the fullbacks with Whitaker and Jennings, a blossoming partnership at centre-half. Harvey Lloyd, Reyes, Strom and Bulkley, the midfield diamond with Waters and Goulding up front. We've got quality on the bench. We've got great defensive and attacking changes. Hopefully we're not going to need them. I'm hoping we can make it comfortable. But that is a very, very tough ask against a brilliant Rafe side. So there he is up front. The man who probably gave us our first excellent European nights and big run is the man who's back to come and haunt us and stop us getting to our first final today. Interestingly though, I say this is the most important one. The difference being, of course, the last two ties, we didn't win the home leg. We relied on our away performance to get us through. So I'm not sure how it's going to pan out tonight as we head to the race course to face Rafe Rovers. It should be a pretty evenly matched game. Whether it'll pan out that way, we'll wait and see. Well, a very quiet half an hour. Just one shot on target apiece and no highlights. Arsenal have got the lead at home to Inter, so looks like the English domination of these European trophies will continue. But this has been a pretty poor half. Ramirez finishes it with a free kick for Rafe into the back post. Pringle loses out in the air to Young Jennings. Cleared long downfield by Bulkley. Walters beats his man with a brilliant touch. He's got Goulding with him. Goes alone though. No. Oh, I was about to celebrate and he put it wide. He so rarely misses them. You just expect the net to be bulging. But equally, he had Goulding who was completely unmarked in the middle. And that is one hell of a chance to miss on the biggest stage of them all. 0-0 at half-time, it's not a bad result if we don't concede an away goal. But I'd like to have the lead ideally. Let's see if we can get it in the second half. Well, it's a throw on the right-hand side. Ten minutes gone after the break and McDonald takes it to Reyes. Player 1-2, they're just keeping the ball in the middle for now. But Reyes releases him, it's a brilliant ball. There's three in the middle, a fourth making a run. Strom's that man, it's past him. Back to Bektas on the edge of the box. He's got the chance to shoot but he's forced wide. Into Reyes at the edge. He's hit the crossbar. How many times have we said that in his European knockout games? As Bulkley's got a corner kick on the left. Gordon loses out of the back stick and it's headed away. Pringle will chase it, but McDonald's there first. We're looking pretty composed on the ball here. Pringle's not had much of a threat yet. I know that could be famous last words. As Reyes plays a 1-2 with a fullback, McDonald chips it in towards Gordon. And it's a good block from Ramirez, sliding in at the front post to stop the shot. But we're starting to get up ahead of steam. We're starting to create chances. Bulkley's corner to the back post again. Not what we needed. Poor straight at a keeper. With an hour gone, it remains goalless. Now it's a corner at the other end. Ramirez to take it. An away goal would be crushing. But Strom heads it clear to Bulkley. We've got a three on two here. He's got Goulding over to the right. He's found him. Goulding's one on one. The defender gets back at him. That never happens. The front too. Not on top of their game tonight. 
Let's go and make some changes. We've got 25 left. Bektas has had a poor game at left back. I'm bringing on Nenov. Up front, I'm doing the usual European sub. I know that Loza looks nervous, but he's the man who's delivered so many times. Strom will come off. Bulkley will go into midfield. Jones in as the number 10. Can they deliver? 15 minutes to go to get a lead for the second leg. As we've got a goal kick with Roberto Simancas. Barely had anything to do today. Gives it to McDonald at right back to Whitaker. Chips it up forward. It's a pretty poor ball in truth. Martins gets it wide to Speha. Long ball through. He's got to be offside. Got to be offside, Ray Frovers. It is. Not sure what the delay was for there. We're going to VAR. Got to be ruled out. He was miles off for sure. And there you go. Clear offside. No goal. We survive. But a threat from Ray Frovers at last. To be honest, as we head into three minutes of stoppage time, Ray Frovers will probably be pleased with that. One shot on target we mustered. I mean, we hit the bar. Gordon, I don't know what he was doing. He took too long to get his shot away. A nil-nil draw is not a disaster, though. So it'll be interesting to see what we can produce in the second leg away from home against a very good side. But in the meantime, we've got a Welsh Cup final. And this time, it'll be with our reserves. Back to face Barry Town United in the Welsh Cup final. What I'm about to do is probably going to seem quite drastic. But we may never, ever get the chance to reach a European final again. And although it's in the balance at the moment, I can't take a chance. The 11 for today then, completely new faces. Agost in goal, Nenov and Morgan the fullbacks with Whelan and McKenzie at centre-half. McWilliams, Bamford, Davis and Jones the midfield diamond. Loza and Broadbent up front. And can we just say as well for Bamford, for McWilliams and maybe for McKenzie, could be the last game for the club for all three of them. So let's go and give them a round of applause. Let's get into the Welsh Cup final. We're up against half of our former youth players, the likes of Ashworth and Blake, two being closed down. Let's see how we get on, because for Barrytown United, the side that were our bogey team for the first few years, this could be a massive return to glory. And it's a pretty good side they've got, when you consider that Harry Gray's out injured their best player. They've got two very good fullbacks, one of our former youngsters in goal and at centre-half. Leo Blake we know very well, Needham's a good player, Walters is their record signing, and Bridgman a superstar striker. They have got quality across the team. They've got decent players on the bench, in fairness. So how are they going to get on today? We're going to go out and try and control this game. We should still be strong enough to win it. But it's going to be a lot closer than it would have been otherwise. We're at the Liberty Stadium with over 10,000 fans in. That's a really good sign for Welsh football. Now let's see who comes out on top. Five minutes gone. It's a Barrytown goal kick. Long ball down the right-hand side from Morgan. Walters will get there first. Brings it down and takes on his fullback Morgan. Doesn't get past him though. Has to go back to Ashworth. The fullback charges down the line. Not really any pressure on him. Gets past Morgan again. Good challenge from the left back. Recovered really well. Goes long towards Broadbent. Flicks on for Loza. Broadbent again into the box. Beats his man. But he's shot straight at Harry Morgan. Not quite. But a good counter attack nonetheless. As we're back 13 minutes in. Bamford chasing a ball that's been headed away. I presume from a set piece or something. Davis puts it through to Broadbent. And Harry Morgan's on fire today. If today we come up against a goalkeeper in the form of his life, as well as playing a reserve team, I think we could be in trouble. As we're back with Whelan, 17 minutes gone, into Henry McWilliams. Chance to play long, but just goes into Bamford in the centre circle. He can look left. We're still dominating the game overall, but there's been a few flurries from Barry that we wouldn't normally see. As Geffen Davis delivers a cross, good header McMinnamy. Back to Davis again. Short for Bamford, White and Nenov, marauding down the right, there's three in the middle, not the fourth we usually see, Bamford gets it again though, can we find the delivery, Nenov in, keeper misses it, McMinnamy saves him, out to McWilliams 35 yards out, to Geffen Davis, to Bamford, Sly tackles too good on him, Davis gets it again though, goes White and Morgan the left back. So narrow, both of the fullbacks have cut in, we're all within the width of the box, the wide pitch not helping us but Tom Jones doesn't care. He goes for a strike from the edge of the D. It's a fantastic effort, but it whistles just wider than near post. I think, though, Harry Morgan would have been beaten. As with a quarter gone, it's a throw on the left for Anderson. Up to Needham. Time on the ball again, but goes short to Ridd. Another one of those signings who's improved their squad. And hopefully they'll do a bit more now. They've got guaranteed group stage football in Europe again. And this is the first summer we'll see with them, with massive money in the tank. As Anderson goes long downfield... They're chasing it at the Barrytown United strikers. I think it was Bridgman trying to get in behind. But Agost is out. He's very alert. And he sweeps up the danger. As he rolls out to Whelan. And now Gwyn Morgan. On the left-hand side. Been an incredibly long highlight. He's released Loza though from a defensive error. 
And Kresimir Loza, ever the man for the big occasion. He's done it in Seville. He's done it in Italy against Lazio. And now he's done it at the Liberty Stadium in the Welsh Cup final v Barrytown. A lot of pressure on him. As ironically, one of the elder statesmen in this team. And he's delivered as Tom Jones nicks it in the middle again. Can he produce one of his big game performances? Gets into the box, Rid wins it. Thought we were going to get a bizarre penalty there. But it goes straight to Gwyn Morgan. Bamford back out to him again. Can we open the floodgates? A second to make it comfortable. Geffen Davis in. Kresimir Loza shot. It's a wonderful save from Morgan. But the offside flag was up. Almost. Almost 2-0. Morgan's goal kick. I mean, we've seen virtually every bit of this game. Loza gets it from McWilliams. Goes alone. Straight at Harry Morgan. Are we going to get it to calm down a bit now? Or will the dominance continue? We've passed the half hour mark. I'm not sure why we've seen so much this game. There's not been many clear cut chances. Nenov nicks the ball there though. Releases Tom Jones. Has to be two. Lays into Loza. It is so unselfish. I started applauding him. He could have just tried to slide it in the corner. Made himself look good. He passes it to Loza who could not miss. It's 2-0. The Welsh Cup final's wrapped up. And this shows that Barrytown United probably still got a way to go. Let's hope we can keep it up in the second half. And maybe... For two of those youngsters on the bench, it could be an incredible occasion. Well, a goal kick for Harry Morgan for Barry. Nearly 10 minutes gone in the second half. We don't want them to score a goal and get back into this. Bamford picks it up in the centre circle to Davis. Long ball forwards poor. Intercepted by Needham and Anderson. Davis gets on the end of the crossfield pass though. Can't release Loza. It's cleared as far as Nenov. He gives it to McKenzie. Nenov again to Davis. To Bamford. To Broadbent. He's got one to take on. Goes back to Bamford. Just keeping possession well. It's out to Nenov on the right. There's four in the middle. Back to Broadbent. Falls for Bamford. The shot's blocked by the last man. Chadwick clears as far as McWilliams. But it is utter dominance. It's been a brilliant display. As McWilliams gets the ball to Davis. Goes back again, does he know? Why to Morgan? To Davis. A third goal and we can make the changes. Morgan gets it left side of the box. Geffen Davis in. Kresimir Loza. Almost a hat trick. Just wide of the post. And with an hour gone, it's 2-0. It's comfortable. And we'll start to think about changes. Because we're going to need a few of these off the bench in midweek. So with 20 to go, let's go and get it done. Up front, we're going to replace Carlton Broadbent with A. Tate. We'll switch Loza to the other side. In the number 10 role, we've got to take off Tom Jones. Likely to feature in the week. Bulkley on for him. And in young Brett Jennings. He's not played in many of the big games either. So I'm a Barrack Whelan returning to fitness. Let's give him a breather too. Three changes made, 20 minutes to go. And Bangor City celebrating and bringing on more youth stars. As Geffen Davis gives the ball away to Waters, the danger man we don't really want to give possession to. Goes long down the right towards Bridgman, but Jennings mops up. Become a really good defender this season. Made his Wales debut in the last international break. As Lowe's has been released on a hat trick. Can he do it? Rounds the keeper. Kresimir Loza with a hat trick. Gwyn Morgan assists it. One of the youth intake stars of many, many years ago. But Kresimir Loza, the man of the moment, scored big goals this year and got a cup final hat trick too. What a performance it's been. And I don't really know why we were worried now. We've got a free kick right side of the box with Geffen Davis. That's comfortably wide. But five minutes to go. It's party time here. As we head into stoppage time, most sides would be getting ready to celebrate after this. And normally... When we've played the Welsh Cup final, we're getting ready to go on holiday. Not this time, because it's all a turn into Thursday night. But not until A. Tate has scored his first goal for Bangor City. And it's a Welsh Cup final goal. Nenov puts the ball into the back stick. Keeper got caught out. He's had a brilliant game. He can't be punished for it. But A. Tate just taps into the empty net. And we've got a new hero on the block. What a lot of brilliant youth intake stars that have worked their way into this team. And the fact seven of them get a medal today is absolutely beautiful. We're going to lift the trophy. The Welsh Cup is trophy number four this season. But we're two games away from the biggest one ever. I'll see you in a moment to head into the second leg of our Europa League semi-final. Can we reach a European final? Well, this is the one. We are potentially moments from history. We've had some bizarre events in the last few days as well. We're finally going up market and getting staff in like loan managers and things like that. We've also been offered a job interview with Leeds, a mid-table Premier League club in recent years. But this is not going to distract us from our main objective. Our history gets made here. Inter Milan play Arsenal. Arsenal have got a 2-0 lead. Frankly, it doesn't matter. 
if when we get to the final we lose it. We've got to get there because it will be an event that you will be able to say we achieved. We played in a European final. Tick. Let's see if we can do it. Nil-nil, a home to Rafe, not a disaster. But we've now realistically got to score or win this game. Let's pick the lineup. We'll be back in a second. I can't imagine many changes from the first leg. Well, three massive calls. Two of them potentially stupid, potentially genius. Let's go and see which one it is. So from the first leg, I have bought in Dimitar Nenov at right back. He will replace Kai McDonald for this one. I've also bought in cup final hat-trick hero. Hero of Seville, Kresimir Loza for Lloyd Gordon, who's miles out of form. And then in centre midfield, I've stuck with Ludomir Srom rather than bringing in Tom Jones. So two changes from the first leg. And not the usual one with Tom Jones coming in. Kaya Bulkley stays as the number 10. Strom stays in centre midfield. We are 90 minutes or 120 potentially away from a Europa League final. Of course, Greg Pringle still the star man and the one that we know and talk about. But most of this side is on over 50 grand a week. It's an incredible football team. We're going to ask the boys to prove a point. We're going to drop to a support duty. We struggled at Rafe in the Champions League. Away from home in particular. They're a massive side now. They're beating the old firm to the Scottish title, which tells you all you need to know. Ray Rovers v Bangor City for a place in the Europa League final. I don't know which side it's more surprising is here, but one of us will be facing Inter or Arsenal in just a week or two's time. Let's see who it is. Fingers and everything else crossed. Is a silent half an hour a good or a bad thing? We keep getting questions to close down Ramirez from the touchline shouts. He is very good, as in better than any of our midfielders. He's basically a double of Kyo Bulkley, but with a little bit more technical ability. And now we've got the crucial injury. Now I know for you guys, Harvey Lloyd is probably, outside of Strom, the weakest player in this starting eleven. But he is so good at the role he does, and there's no one else that does it the same. So do we bring on Henry McWilliams, who's got the bit more experience? Or do we bring on Whelan, who's thunderous in the tackle? I don't know which one to go for. I feel like because McWilliams is better on the ball, that might be what we have to do. I have to do it. Experience first. Henry McWilliams is on. Please don't let that be the wrong decision. And it's a good substitution opportunity gone too. Well, half time, it remains nil-nil. Are we going all the way to extra time? Are we basically just seeing two sides that have never been in this position before and are fearful of losing? So it's a rave corner to the back stick. It doesn't change much in the grand scheme of this tie, but it now cannot be settled beyond the 90 minutes. No extra time, no waiting around. The moment is now. We've got to take it. Rafer on top. Let's go and demand a bit more as we've got to throw on the right with Nenov. Loza flicks it on. Hoofed away by the centre half as far as Whitaker. He's got two down the right. He's going to go himself here, is he? Lays in Nenov, the wonder kid. Back to Reyes, to Loza, to Nenov. Lovely spell of football. We've not seen this yet. Reyes through ball is blocked, though. It's back to McWilliams. Out to the left to Bektas overlapping. Got three in the middle. Back to Srom. Oh, over the bar. Great opportunity. Not much pressure on him. But he didn't take it. And unfortunately, it remains 1-0 Rafe. We're clearing the ball away. We're getting some territory. Oh, that's stupid. The pressure's telling. The pressure is telling. I don't think, and I might be proven wrong here. I don't think Ruben Reyes has ever been sent off for us. I barely think he's picked up a yellow card. And he has chosen now to go in with a two-footed lunge. Do we push McWilliams up and lose the holding player? Or do we put Bulkley in and play sensible? I think you already know my answer to that. No support for the defence. We're 1-0 down. If we lose four, we lose four. Let's go for it. Inter and Arsenal is on a knife edge. Inter are 1-0 up on the night. 2-1 down on aggregate. As Nenov gets the ball at right back. This is where we miss the holding midfielder. No pivot to pass into. As Greer gets it out wide. Martins down the right. They are a very good side, Rafe. And they're showing it here. They've just got that few more years of top level European experience. And a few slightly better stars. Ramirez, Pringle. We haven't got two players that good ourselves. We've only got the one in Kyo Bulkley. As Martins gets the ball on the right side again to Jovanovic. I think we're going to have to make a change here. We're getting absolutely roasted. It might be too late. Simancas makes the save. Bektas clears it away. Let's go and make a second substitution. Lows up. It's just not worked. Gordon on. Back to the tried and trusted. In a minute, we'll replace Kaya Bulkley if we need to, I think. Or do we go for Strom? Let's do it. We're going to take off Ludomir Strom. 
Bulkley into midfield. Tom Jones number 10. 25 minutes to steal a goal. Because one, don't forget, sends us through. But I don't know. I don't know if we've got it in us. We've never been on this stage before. I don't know how we react to the pressure. Ramirez with time there to Greer. And Walters nicks it. It's a terrible mistake. He's in one on one. Kane Walters has to score. Oh, he's straight at the keeper. Oh, the pressure is telling. The pressure is really telling on these boys. From Reyes going nuts with a tackle. For Walters hitting it straight at the keeper. For the lack of slowing down. For the injuries. For everything. It's not working out. It's going to be heartbreak, isn't it? We're still creating chances at 1-0, which is great. But so are they on the counter. And a second puts this tie to bed. They've got a man over on the right in Martins. We need Simancas. He saves us again down to his left. Excellent work from the keeper. We've got 10 minutes. Do we get one more chance? That's all we're looking for. One opportunity to win it. If we lose two, we lose two. But I think it's going to be heartbreak. Ray Rovers one. Bangor City nil. Out of character actions across the whole pitch from so many players. I think it's fair to say on this occasion that the occasion got to us in fact. And considering this might be the only chance we get, we got a little friendlier draw than we do normally. And I think that might have been our best opportunity gone. I hope I'm wrong. I hope these youngsters continue to improve and come back bigger and better. But that's a crushing blow. Rafe Rovers will play in the Europa League final. We'll find out if it's Arsenal or Inter. And we'll plan what we're going to do next week for the start of the new season. Well, there you go. Arsenal cling on. So, Arsenal v Rafe Rovers in the final. It's hard to say that Ruben Reyes cost us. It probably did. The injury to Harvey Lloyd was influential in the game. But we've got to be a side that can cope with that. And at the moment, we just aren't. We've got to have a look at where we are in the coefficient. That's the last thing we've got to do before the season review. So, in Europe, we have got up to... 37 points. We are above all three of those and the one below. We're going up to ninth. Who's in ninth place and what do you get? In ninth, you get a team in the group stage, a team in the league path third qualifying, so guaranteed football there. And the rest of it doesn't really change a great deal. It's just that the third side get guaranteed Europe as well. Four trophies back on the screen as we win the SPFL Trust Trophy this year. Simancas joined us permanently and was absolutely brilliant in goal. Agos not far behind him as the backup. Dwayne Bamford, brilliant experience pro. 500 quid a week, what an addition he's been. Let's look at the season's results because to be honest, the main thing was this. Europa League semi-final and that Rafe away game is the first match we lost in the whole run of the knockouts. Again, how the match to remember wasn't one of the European ones, I'm not quite sure to be honest. The sponsorship is up, we've had a few new deals announced during the year, we're getting loads of shirt sales, we will get higher broadcast and competition revenue this year, the unallocated pool comes in a couple of weeks time. The reputation stayed at 3 star though, and the same for TNS and Barry at 2 star, for sides that have been in the last 16 in Europe two years in a row, it does seem a little bit harsh. Tom Jones finds his way into the best 11 this year. Bulkley into the centre of the diamond. Nenov in at right back ahead of McDonald. That might be a permanent change next year. And look, back up front two have made it. You could argue they've played the easier games. Let's have a look at the accolades quickly. Harvey Lloyd breaks the worst discipline record. Dewey DeRosa makes the youngest ever appearance. Kean Bulkley, goal of the season. What a player he's been for us this year. But history in the making as we win four competitions. What a way to finish the season. We will be back for the start of the new year on Monday with a transfer special. We'll find out if Colin Bay can make it the same five sides in Europe again and how many teams we can get to the group stage. Can we break another record? And will we see the bigger sides flexing their muscles in the transfer market? All of that to come, but if you did enjoy this tense episode, please do chuck a thumbs up on it. Subscribe down below for daily FM21 content. The new mini-series is back again tomorrow. Please do come and check that out. There's links in the eye above to the live streams on Twitch and loads of other stuff too. And I'll see you on Monday for transfer special and European qualifiers.